Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode in Colden's Reviews, where I like to review Bibles, books, and other theology-related things. And today, we're talking about psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. I fix my eyes on Christ. I fix my eyes on Christ. So, I do have a few editions of some hymn books and in a Psalter that I want to show you um, that I think are beautiful and great. And I'll just spoiler alert one right here. This is Hymns of Grace. It's been put out by the Masters Press. Um, it is an excellent edition of hymns, both ancient and modern or older. I don't know if ancient is the right word. Older, some of them I guess ancient would work for. Um, but I want to talk today about the subject of really of hymns um, and psalms uh, in the context of what should the church do with their music. Um, and I I want to show this edition off here, but it'll be kind of a quick review of that as well. But um, this subject's pretty close to my heart. Um, I've done music ministry uh, plenty of times, um, and really there's a, a, a trajectory I can see in my past of doing music ministry in the church, and um, I grew up in a traditional Southern Baptist church, and in growing up, we sang out of the Baptist hymnal. Um, so those songs early on in my childhood, those are kind of those what I knew was the sort of Baptist hymnal flavor of church music. And as time went on, my family and I, my dad became a pastor and we went to a new church. And in so doing that, um, the musical style, that, and I was a part of spearheading this in some ways, um, started to shift in this newer church. It also was a, um, a hymn-based church, mostly sang out of a hymnal. Um, and then things started to shift and change where we got projector screens and um, we started to move more towards contemporary Christian music. Okay. And this would have been the, the late 90s, early 2000s. So in that transition, I started playing guitar. I started uh, really getting into music in general and uh, was part of our worship band. And I did music for a long time after, still doing music to this day. But in that time, there was this trajectory to sort of push hymnody aside and embrace just the modern contemporary worship and and forget about the hymns of the faith of old and i'm ashamed to say that was sort of some of my position uh, as well i would i wouldn't say i was like necessarily like let's get rid of hymns but i i could take them or leave them and through the years, I have come to to really repent of that view. And I don't know, maybe repent's not the right word, but it seems appropriate. Um, because they're, the hymns that I grew up with, the hymns of the faith, are some of the most important songs that I know. On Christ the solid rock I stand. It is well with my soul. These songs and so many others were pivotal for me, especially as I got older and realized their great importance. Because Hymns are not just about um, theological instruction, although that is very important. On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand, for example, is so theologically rich, it's vital. But also, there's something about the melody. 
hymns are meant for congregational singing. They're meant to be easy for people to lift their voices together and sing. And that is what hymns should be in the church. And it's what church music should be about, in my opinion. Church music is, it, when we come together, it's not a performance. I don't see that in my Bible that teaches performance. Now, there's nothing wrong with enjoying a concert or enjoying good music in a different setting. But when we are gathered together to worship, this is not a performance. This is a coming together to worship God together and the voices of the people singing together is what scripture actually commands us to do that we are to encourage one another with psalms hymns and spiritual songs and what hymns often do is they're so they're easy to catch on to and so you can get the melody stuck in your head and it's a very useful way to memorize good biblical truth such as on Christ the solid rock I stand so I think hymns are something that the church ought not to let go of and psalms as well you know a psalter that's that's I think that's going to be a different discussion for a different time um but the Psalms as well, like we should be singing Psalms from our Bible. And there's different ways you can do that. I'm going to show you one here in just a minute. But does that mean that we should also not do modern music? Well, let me, let me first really quick address this. No, it's not what I'm saying at all. Um, and, and I'm not saying that all hymns are theologically accurate. There's some hymns with bad theology in them. We shouldn't sing those. There's there's hymns that aren't good. Okay? Just like there are modern songs that really aren't good. They're not helpful for our souls. So how do we come to know what's what? We weigh our songs against God's word. Are they biblical? Are they teaching and getting into our hearts biblical? truth and there's with modern stuff there's a whole lot of discussion about you know where the songs come from do they come from maybe a, a place that's not so great that's a discussion for another time um you know even in hymns i will say this there's a, one of my favorite hymns probably one of yours too it is well with my soul it was written by horatio spafford who turned out to be um in his later years pretty heretical unfortunately even though it is well with my soul is solid biblical truth so that's the most important thing we can have a discussion about the source as well but the most important thing i think we need to consider is are they biblically accurate are they rich and then are they singable are they things that is easy for the congregation to come together and worship because there's great modern hymns too and that's why i'm excited to show you these this this hymns of grace edition because it has some awesome stuff in it from um, modern writers like Matt Boswell, Matt Papa, like Keith and Kristen Getty, folks like that um, that have, that have really done some great work in modern hymns. But it also has the rich classics. So sorry about this rant for hymns, uh, but I felt like it was an important thing to talk about today. Uh, and now I'm quickly just going to show you a couple of these hymn books that I have from the hymns of grace uh, that are absolutely beautiful and I think incredibly useful for the church and in the home for family worship or small groups. So let's take a look at them real quick. All right, pardon the uncleanliness of my desk and the visibility of my microphone, but um, I just wanted to show you these additions really quick. This one is super cool and one I think a lot of my audience would be most interested in because it does have a cowhide paste down liner, but a cowhide cover. Um, and it's beautiful. It has some small raised hubs there. Um, and it actually has a little ribbon marker, which is beautiful. Um, and our, our gold gilding, which is great. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a beautiful format. Hymn book. 
you can look up in the back. You can go back here and find different ways to um, pull these hems in. Like there's a scripture index for um, the scripture that's attached to it. There's topical, alphabetical, all sorts of ways you can use this. I've often heard it said, and I think it's true, that a hem book is another tool in a, in a pastor's arsenal for study and for other things, and that's absolutely true. It helps us get these truths into ourselves. Next one, same edition, just this is the Pew edition. Um, and yeah, it's a really nice hardback edition. Great paper. And these run about $20 a piece on their website. So not bad. Um, this one, at least last time I checked, uh, was like 35. So not really that much more for kind of a nicer leather bound edition, if that's what you want. And then this one intrigued me, and this is the Psalms of Grace. Maybe for another time to, to talk a little bit more in depth about this, but it's a Psalter essentially, and it's it's got the Psalms in, the, in line, so you're gonna actually get all the text of the Psalms, and then they've incorporated songs that go with those psalms and they could be just you know psalms and meters sort of thing like this psalm 2 here called why do the nations rage um, and you can see like musically down here where the arrangements are coming from but yeah just really great i think it's important that churches and in our homes that we keep these great hymns because the theological truth that's in them will often come to comfort our souls in some of the hardest parts of life and in the most joyous times. So sing hymns, sing songs, sing spiritual songs, sing psalms, sing loud when you go to church. It's important. It's not about you or the person next to you. It's about the Lord and our singing together to him to glorify his name, to make much of him we we do this for that reason and that reason alone. Thanks for watching this video, guys. We'll catch you in the next one.